Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at the city of Lublin, one of the oldest and most historical city of Eastern Poland. We'll be going to the Catholic University of Lublin to talk to a professor, a Polish-Canadian, who wrote the first history book in English about Lublin. Let's uh, kick things off with the history of uh, 1966 when the Polish state was established. Were there any records of Lublin being a city back then? Were there any archaeological findings? Rather archaeological findings. Right. So what they, uh, what they know, mm -hmm. more or less, were there, there were several settlements. There wasn't one concentrated settlement. There were several settlements and a fort before fort. the state of uh, Poland was created. And it was on a trading trail. Uh, one of the branches of the famous Amber Trail, mm. the one that extended out to the east, shall we say, mm -hmm. and not the north-south one that's slightly better known, right. up to the Baltic Sea. Right. And, uh, but of course, then when the Polish state was established, uh, it disrupted the earlier settlement, shall we say. <laughs> so they, they know that a, a, a lot of the area was burned out, mm -hmm. so it wasn't a peaceful transition, shall we say, from the older. Right, for our audience who doesn't know about the Amber Trail, can you go a little bit into what that is? Oh, yes. It's just like a general <laughs> okay. description okay. and idea. Well, the Amber Trail, uh, the Baltic was very, uh, one of the commercial aspects of the Baltic was the Amber, uh, of, Jewelry was, mm -hmm. was there in the, in, in the sand and so on. And, right. and uh, there were a couple of trading routes mm -hmm. that uh, went up to the, th throughout Europe. So there, were, uh, there was a trading route that extended into Western Europe. Mm -hmm. And there was one that went out further east, shall we say. Right. And Lublin was on this one that was further east. Up to right. the, it's actually on the trail and that's yes. kind of had its significance. Yes. Yes, Interesting. so that's one of the reasons why Lublin was the most important center in between the Bug and the Vistula rivers, mm. two major, well, the Bug is kind of a major tributary of the Vistula river. Mm -hmm. So what was the role of Lublin in the early stages of the Polish state being established? Well, Lublin um, maintained its position as a, as a trading settlement, shall we say, but it also became important for the, well, the early state was, shall we say, unified for more or less a century. Mm -hmm. And at, at that point, so there was a, a castle, well, a fort, more a fort than a, <laughs> than a castle. And uh, there was a, a royal official. Right. Uh, the church must have come in more or less at that time as well although perhaps a little less is known about that. Uh, there is a very early church uh, by, by the name of St. Saint, Saint Nicholas, and St. Nicholas was a very uh, popular saint among both Western, Western Christendom and Eastern Christendom. Right. So, but at that time it had many roles. Mm. Uh, the, the saint had many, <laughs> had many uh, functions, shall we say, right. <laughs> is a, a very blunt term. Sure. And uh, so um, that even causes a problem for the historians yeah. because of the different functions. So one of the functions was, for instance, St. Nicholas was a patron of markets. Right. So they think that there must, well, there, they know that there was a market close to the area when, where St. Nicholas Church mm. was, uh, was, where the parish was established. But, they, but on the other hand, St. Nicholas also uh, shepherded souls to the uh, to purgatory or wherever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it might have simply been that there was a, a graveyard, a Christian graveyard on the hill where that church was later established. Right. Uh, more people are inclined towards this market thesis. So the, uh, here is another problem where you don't have documents. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guesswork, right, right. And, but it's fascinating. It's fascinating yes. because, it, because of these different functions that also says something about the mentality of the people at that period. Yeah, it's a very yes. interesting thought. And uh, so that's one of the things that I, that I was very interested in as mm -hmm. well. Like for instance, there's less debate about another church that is now in the old town, that was built in the old town. It was the first official parish church 
because it was in this major part of the, of the old town. St. Uh, Nicholas was a little bit off to the side from the castle and the other. The major settlement was in the current old town. And uh, that was St. Michael's church. And St. Michael is a militant saint. Right. So he helped in military ventures. And, there, and since that part of, the, of uh, Poland was invaded a number of times, mm -hmm. so you had a lot of <laughs> fighting. <laughs> and there was a prince of uh, Krakow. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lublin was in this Krakow, uh, at least uh, in the church province of, of Krakow, but also, I guess, the, uh, the state had a lot to do with Lublin at that time. Mm -hmm. And he was chasing out uh, kind of Jadwingians. I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. But they were invading Poland at, at that time. And he was kind of, uh, wasn't very successful. No. So the legend goes, he sat underneath an oak tree okay. in the old town, mm -hmm. and he had a dream. And St. Michael inspired him to chase the, <laughs> the Jadwigians out of Poland. Right. And so when he, uh, when he was successful, he uh, built the church. Right. So you have a sacred oak, you have a church. And uh, so they also think there might have been some sort of cult there before, pre-Christian cult mm -hmm. at that site as well. Now the church has not survived. It uh, was taken down in the, the 19th century. Oh. But there's a great uh, sort of, um, well, they built a kind of a bronze miniature of that church on oh, the site of okay. that church in the old town. On the way to the castle, you Lublin's early history is veiled in mystery as few documents survived from the 13th and 14th century. Next up, we'll ask Professor Garbowski about the difficulties in writing about the city's early history. When it comes to studying early documents and going into the details of Lublin's past history, do you find it to be easy or were there difficulties in trying to figure out what really happened back then? Because I don't imagine documenting was a really prominent thing at the time. Well, when you have a state, you have documents. Mm -hmm. And here, of course, I'm basing uh, what I'm saying here on, on, on what I've read by uh, a, a number of these uh, historians of er Lublin's earlier mm -hmm. history. And uh, one of the problems was that Lublin was on the frontier. So of course, there was a state. There, there was even a ch uh, an important church official mm -hmm. who was mentioned. He, actually, the, the, the church official was the first one mentioned in a, in a chronicle anywhere. Mm -hmm. So the end of the, the 12th century. But uh, these documents, because Lublin was on the frontier and was uh, invaded a number of times, most of these, docu these documents simply uh, disappeared. Uh -huh. They were destroyed. So basically, uh, most of what is known about Lublin is archaeology or some of the, built, like I mentioned, some of these churches that you, know, right. that you have uh, mm -hmm. guesswork. Right. So the name says something in itself. So that Church of uh, St. Nicholas that I, that I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, the actual document is from the 14th century, but they know that it must have been much earlier. So it's like archaeology <laughs> up to a point, and then yes. when we finally have documents, we start retracing yes. and see if we can connect the you dots. You can only say so much with, ar with uh, archaeology. Right. It's, they usually go hand in hand, mm -hmm. and then you get a fuller story. As we have seen today, Lublin has a very long, yet at times dramatic, history. But places such as the Catholic University of Lublin sufficiently demonstrated the city spirit and their love for freedom. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.